kind of ironic to be talking about slow cities in this uh, fast form, but anyway, okay. Uh, a French photographer named Henri Cartier-Bresson once term, uh, termed uh, the idea of the decisive moment. You're walking through the city and you have to stop long enough to capture a beautiful image. And it's that delicious idea of slowness that I want to talk about tonight. But first we need to talk about speed, not the kind you snort and powder, but the rhythm of our everyday life in cities where we're texting, tweeting, Googling, uh, constantly ex expecting to have things quickly. And in effect, we end up disconnecting from our environment by doing that. Um, this is supposedly one of the great cities that we built in the 20th century, Las Vegas. Um, is it really the best we can do? Uh, a friend of mine who's a professor there tried to film a documentary on the streets of Las Vegas and they kicked him off the streets. He said, but is this public space? They said, no, the public street is down below, sunken below the road where you can't actually see anything. Uh, here's another great feat of the 20th century, Disneyland. Why is it that you have to pay $100 to walk on a real city street with people, trolleys, buildings that look like corner stores? Uh, is that the only place to do it? Is that the best we can do? Uh, and you know, here we have iPod. What is this saying? That you should walk around the city with things in your ears so you don't hear anybody? You're in your own little cocoon? You're separated? That's not public. That's privatization. We're creating a privatized city. We're distancing ourselves from the environment and it's being uh, advertised by these mega corporations. And here we are, the great uh, urban town square of the 20th century, the shopping mall, uh, which gives us all the rules about what we can do and tells us uh, how, to, how to behave. It's converted us from public citizens to private consumers. That's what we do in public places now. We consume, we've lost the ability. And here in uh, Universal Sim Studios City Walk, uh, they advertise themselves as a public place. It costs $20 to park there. They have over 100 surveillance monitors watching your every step. There's nowhere to sit for free. If you want to sit down, you have to pay like eight bucks or $10 for a coffee. So that's the public life. Uh, so this is what we've done. We've created a city of speed, of quickness, where we're constantly doing things, and now it's gotten to the point where we're so disconnected from the environment that even when we're driving, we're doing something else. I can't tell you the number of people I see texting and doing things on their uh, smartphone. And this is what we've lost. We've lost slowness, the art of slowness. You know, everyone made fun of Al Gore. He made that award-winning movie. Uh, and yet, the fact is that uh, the Earth moves very, very, very slowly. Can we slow down long enough to absorb that, to digest that idea? Now, across the border in Mexico, what are they doing? They're copying some of the worst things that we uh, do in the United States. Uh, in the city of Oaxaca, Mexico, on a UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, the public plaza, the main plaza of Oaxaca, they wanted to build a uh, McDonald's there, and the city fought back and said no, and they voted it down, thank God. But we have to ask the question, what is the impact of these global mega developments like McDonald's um, along places like Revolution Avenue in Tijuana? Everyone laughs about Tijuana. We have to ask the question, what exactly was that development, and uh, what does it mean to create that kind of a public space? I actually think Revolution Avenue is a pretty good public space because it doesn't try to be anything more than what it is. It's theatrical, it's theater, it's a place that people walk and have fun, it's funny, and it doesn't pretend to be anything more than that, and it's a real street, it's not a shopping mall. You don't have to pay to get in, it's just a place to hang out. Okay, so the real question is, here's Quintero, Mexico, an old colonial city, the center had been abandoned for many years, the city decided to take back their downtown, they closed off all the streets and the plazas, they built pedestrian corridors, and young people are moving back in, buying up buildings, living and working in downtown Quintero, it's a great model, great example. Here's Barcelona, they took an old neighborhood, a slaughterhouse in a working class neighborhood, and they invited an aging surrealistic painter who you may have heard of named Juan Miro. That's the last thing he ever designed before he died. They decided the public spaces of these neighborhoods are where you can create identity and make people feel good. Everyone knows in Barcelona about the Sagrada Familia, about these famous uh, 
uh, building. But what they don't know is how planners and architects fought to, to, to preserve all the public spaces around that building so you can look at it. So the lesson here is we need public spaces of contemplation. We need to be able to enjoy the city and a place to do it. Here's one of my favorite. This is in Rio de Janeiro, yeah. It's, uh, uh, this was a wealthy family's home in this 18th and 19th century. The city bought this land and they recycled it and turned it into a public park. And this is an art school. Anyone can go in there and hang out. It's a great, great public space. Uh, someone mentioned William White and William White and how he wrote about what makes a great public space. Here's every element of a great public space. People, enclosure, bright colors, shade, places to sit, places to hang out. It's one of the most oldest public spaces in Spain. It's called the Puerta del Sol. And it flat out works, and yet they're figuring out ways to make it work in the 21st century also. Uh, that's the thing about, about European cities. I know we always glorify European cities, but there is this, this point. You need to make everyday experiences great public experiences. So when you go to a train station in Madrid, and you're walking to the train station, there's a plaza there. People are enjoying that plaza. Of course, we learn the most from our friends in Paris. They taught us about one of the greatest public experiences of all, the cafe. Whether you're hanging out, drinking with your friends, writing, or falling in love, the cafe is a great place to do it. And notice the chairs face out to the street, sending you the message that you're not, it's not about you, it's about you and connected to something else. That's what's important. In London, along the Thames River, was an abandoned place 30 years ago. They were building skyscrapers. It was a big corporate business city. They rediscovered the greatness of their of walking along this public space. And they realized, like Henri Cartier-Bresson once said, when you have that moment, grab it, because it might be lost very quickly. Thank you very much.